This is the humble neon lamp. It's used as an indicator in lots of electrical appliances because it's so easy to power them with just a resistor. And you find them in lots of different things inside kettles, various electrical appliances, inside your clothes iron, just to give you like a glow indication that the power is on, extension cords and so on. But these are actually a lot cooler than you think. It's a gas discharge lamp. And it's got a few little nifty tricks up its sleeve. It's not just a passive component. Now, in order to use one of these, you, you can't just simply connect it to the mains. If you did that, it would strike an arc, the gas would ionize, and it would essentially be a short circuit, and it would destroy itself. So you need to add a resistor in series with it. So now we can safely drive it on mains voltage. And connect the power. And as you can see, the resistor now limits the current and completes the circuit. Now that the gas is ionized, it works just fine on mains voltage, in this case 230 volts AC. Now you can also run this on DC, and I can demonstrate that by putting a diode on this leg. Now you notice it's running on DC now, in this case half wave DC, so it's a bit flickery, but only the one electrode on the inside is glowing now. So you can actually use this as a way to indicate polarity for a, a, a DC voltage. Now, the weird thing about these neon lamps is they, once they ionize, they start conducting, you can actually lower the voltage and they stay conducting. So they'll actually stay, once they strike, they'll stay lit. And then you can lower the voltage way below the voltage that it struck, and then finally it'll turn off. That gives us an interesting hysteresis curve which means you can do quite cool things with this little lamp. For instance, you can turn it into an oscillator. You can make what's called a relaxation oscillator. So by adding something as simple as a capacitor to it, now what's happening is the resistor limits the current while the capacitor charges. Effectively, there's an open circuit because the gas isn't ionized. And um, when, once the capacitor reaches the strike voltage, the tube um, effectively lights and then short circuits the capacitor. But because it stays lit below its strike voltage, it stays on for a fraction of a second. So then it discharges the capacitor and the cycle continues. And this is what's called a relaxation oscillator. This is a very good example of the mechanical equivalent of a relaxation oscillator. It's one of those bamboo tipping fountains. The bamboo fills up with water and it's like the capacitor filling up with electricity and then rapidly discharging. In this case, it tips over when it reaches the tipping point. So it's essentially the same thing. It's a relaxation oscillator in mechanical form. And you can use these to make audio oscillators as well, not just a blinking light. So now in this way, we have a blinking indicator light for one of your projects that can operate directly on mains voltage. Now you can take this one step further and effectively you can connect two neon lamps together in more or less the same arrangement, slightly different arrangement. And then you can do alternate flashing LEDs. Now, bear in mind, there's no transistors or active electronics. This is a, an A-stable flip-flop. The only active components is this supposedly passive neon lamp. You could even make these flash in a ring. Quite, quite nifty, isn't it? Much cooler than just a normal indicator. And this is just done with the capacitors and resistors. Now it's even possible to make a simple um, A-stable flip-flop out of this or a, a memory cell or memory circuit. Um, 
because there's a striking voltage when the gas ionizes and sort of a holding voltage where it stays ionized until it drops out. If you get the point just before it turns on, but not quite on yet, you can make a set, sorry, you can make a set and reset circuit. So you press it once here. So it drags the voltage just to the point where it turns on and then it stays strike, strike and lit. And this pulls it down to turn it off. And you can demonstrate here that there is effectively a point where it strikes and then you can turn it back and it stays lit for a while until it turns off. So there's two effective voltages. The strike voltage and the extinguish voltage. The neon lamp actually behaves in exactly the same way as a Schmidt trigger and you can build a relaxation oscillator in the same way using a Schmidt trigger. And that's the hysteresis that gives this little neon bulb its magic. This little any 2 indicator lamp. More than just the indicator lamp. They used to do so many things with it. You can use it to make a clock. And even build a whole complicated computer um, circuits out of them. And in the old days they were used for all sorts of purposes. And I just thought it's really cool to, even today, you could still make these basic circuits out of them with not a single transistor. It's even possible to use a neon lamp as the trigger for a track to make a simple light dimmer circuit or simple motor control from a 230 volts AC. The capacitor and the potentiometer form a time delay circuit. And as the capacitor charges through the potentiometer, there is a delay in the pointed with the waveform where the neon lamp would strike when it, the gas ionizes and then triggers the gate of the triac. And then uh, the triac conducts at a certain point of the AC waveform that rides up and down. So it's called phase angled power control. And it's good for controlling um, some types of motors and uh, traditional incandescent light bulbs. So the next time you see one of these little neon indicator lamps, it's essentially the same thing as this. You can see if I pull it out, it's a miniature version. This is little resistor to limit the current. The next time you see one of them, just appreciate how cool they really are. I've probably missed out a ton of circuits you can actually build with them. They used to be used so often in the old days. Nowadays, they're just a humble little indicator light. And they've somewhat been replaced by LEDs. But because they're so easy to use and they're kind of bulletproof, they still use them every day still in everyday appliances. And I think they're going to be with us for a long time still. They're kind of a remnant of the past of the old uh, vacuum tubes. But I like them and I still use them to this very day. Anyway, so if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and uh, leave a comment and uh, maybe we can make some nice videos like this about other interesting stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.